Welcome back, everyone, to the Hearthstone Global Games. We are ready for match three of the day, and it's going to be Turkey versus Vietnam. It's going to be one really interesting scene. We've only seen too much from either of these countries in terms of Hearthstone so far, so. No, it's definitely um, one of the, the biggest prospects in terms of just learning about players and learning about cultures of their countries as well as we go along. Because, as I mentioned, this is a big part of what Hearthstone Global Games is about. Much like HCT made some stars in the forms of, you know, Dr. Hippie, Pavel himself turning out to be the world champion, world champion at the end of the year. These players didn't really get high-profile invites. They didn't have a big stream, a big organization backing to the backing them before HCT went to this huge open format. Now they're you know household names in the Hearthstone scene. Now HGG is a similar opportunity for just countries as a whole to really just burgeon their scene locally because a big performance by a country in this tournament can suddenly, in your home nation itself, bring more players out to fireside gatherings, make more people want to get involved, grow the scene as a whole in these locations. And Turkey, to start with, do have the player with perhaps the best name in the tournament. Stop it, Blizz. Yeah. He's a fantastic name. Uh, Thunder Up is the player I know the most out of all these. He's a quite a prominent ladder player. Uh, as long as that's the same guy, but I'm pretty sure it is. Mm -hmm. There's a guy called Thunder Up. He gets a very high legend quite quite regularly on the old ladder. And then we look at Vietnam as well. Nilo is the uh, you know one of the uh, better well-known players as well with a lot of uh, good tournament performances in the past. And Chani, Iki, and ZGG Leoz making up that list. But as you mentioned, Thunder Up, very strong ladder player in his own right. You could say that he thunders up the ladder on a regular basis, but you shouldn't, because that would be a terrible joke that only that no self-respecting person would make while looking at camera. Correct. Yes. Yeah, so uh, you got all the information you need to know about Sol there, but we can see the information about the format. It's going to be, uh, as we mentioned earlier, in case you weren't the best of five between these teams, each player on the team effectively being one deck and needing to get one win for the team to make it up to three total. And then the first team to three will take the series. We see it's going to be Roll versus Icky first. Two Druids, Paladin and Hunter. Both players will be only choosing one of their own classes to play. And uh, that's going to be a best of one, effectively. So more Hunter, hopefully. That's all I'm hoping for. Yeah. And the matchups happen as you see them there down the list. Left player playing right player. That happens in a random order, essentially. The teams pick their order, but they don't know who they're going to come up against on the other side, which essentially randomizes it. Then they get the information that we see here, which is which classes are being played by which players. And they get to pick which of their two decks they want to play. Roll with that in, uh, information has chosen to go with Paladin Icky, on the other hand, is fulfilling Raven's every hope and dream Ooh. and going with the Hunter. Yeah, and uh, in terms of pick order, though, the only thing that isn't as random is who you choose to be fourth. Correct. Because yeah. the fourth player might not have to play. If your team wins or loses 3-0, then the fourth player doesn't play. Mm -hmm. And then there's also the ace player who will play again if required. Like we saw in the last series, if it goes to 2-2, two, two, there is one more game. See the players getting ready though. Roll there from Turkey and Icky in Vietnam. Looks like he's uh, got a couple of his teammates with him as well, or at least other people. I'm not sure if that's like, potential like LAN cafe. It looks that way, yeah. Or just an office. They just have a gaming house maybe. Right. In the office. That many gaming chairs in one location seems to suspect that it's, you know, not just somebody's apartment. But <laughs> they just like gaming chairs. I mean, why not? It's possible. Um, but yeah, Turkey, Turkey and Vietnam, as I said, not um, countries that have a lot of uh, experience with culture as well, uh, culturally either. I've, I've traveled a lot, but never been able to visit either Vietnam or Turkey. Although Vietnam is all a place that I have looked at ever since I uh, saw a, a documentary on it. And it's um, I think like the perception of Vietnam is that it's a very, you know, it's a kind of crowded city based kind of place, but there's actually these incredible like forests and greenery lakes and vistas that you can go to and experience if you actually get out into the countryside. It looks like a phenomenally beautiful country. I've got a friend over there right now and all I see is pictures that make me jealous that there you go. Oh, so there, there you so go. Definitely somewhere to check out, but it's co-founder. And player of Team Vietnamese-based Hearthstone team, Smoking Falcons. The Damn. only way that team name would be better if it was Smoking Ravens. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, I'll take Falcons as a strong second pick. I like it. Well, this suddenly makes sense. Icky is the chief organizer for a lot of local gatherings ah. and Hearthstone tournaments in Vietnam. So, yeah, that seems to bring it all together that they are playing in some kind of land location. Roll, on the other hand, though, the highest point earner in Turkey throughout 2016. 47 points is nothing to be sniffed at. at Not all. at all, and neither are kebabs since his last uh, interesting fact was Roll loves kebabs. Everyone loves kebabs. I think kebabs they are, are something to be sniffed at, aren't they? 
That feeling. Not in, not in that aspect. You're taking me literally. That so feeling old. after you just walk out of a bar at 2 a.m. after having one too many orange juices <laughs> and just that smell of kebab just makes you incredibly hungry. Yeah, and it always gets the job done. You normally wake up halfway through the night, half eating kebab on the side, and then finish it off. We're revealing an awful lot about our lifestyle right now, Raven. Yeah, these could be like UK facts as well. Yeah, I'm not sure how true. relevant this is across other it, countries, but we're, we're basically giving you the average UK night out here. Yes. It should be clarified that a kebab in every other country is very different to yeah, a, kebab a kebab in the UK. Yeah. But most importantly, we are getting into the first game. It's going to be Roll versus Icky, Paladin versus Hunter, and no surprise at all at this point, Murloc opener. Mm hmm yeah, it's happened fairly consistently so far. There, as I mentioned, there has been a lot of variation in the Paladin list that have been played in the early days of this new format. We've seen Elementals, we've seen Handbuffs, we've seen Handbuff Elementals, we've seen Nazoth, we've seen Control, Midrange, Murlocs, in and out of all those archetypes as well. But as the dust is beginning to settle, everyone is gravitating more or less with one, two, maybe three cards different kind of gravitating towards this same list. Yeah, crazy, crazy day when we can say a Murloc Paladin is one of the top decks in any given meta. It's going to look like a hold for a lot of these cards. True Silver Champion being held as well. It's going to be nice to clear up a lot of the uh, early to mid game Hunter threats very cleanly. Yes, and uh, Hydrologist into Rockpool Hunter can potentially be a lot of tempo early. Um, interestingly, if Fiery Bat isn't played on turn one for Hunter going first, it's actually hard for them to really generate a lot of power early on, which makes plays like Hydrologist into Rockpool Hunter have a good chance of sticking. Obviously, Crackling Razormore can mess with that significantly, but you know that's a card that's probably going to punish you as Paladin no matter what you do, because yeah. you have no way as Paladin to remove a one-mana card from the board going second. The cards just don't really exist that you play in a Paladin deck. The only way you're doing it is if you're going first and you get on the board with Lost in the Jungle. Oh, you play Lights Justice for some reason. But the yeah. Card, yeah, the card is there in the collection, but in an actual playable Paladin deck, they generally have no way to interact with early board stage. Yeah, and also as well, if you're going to try and play around Razormore often, it's going to be very difficult to do so right. because Hunter is currently excelling at sticking something to the board and then suddenly even just, uh, you know, poisonous is going to be a huge problem. So I imagine we are going to see the Razormore here. The Runt just gets cleaned up very efficiently. And, uh, let's see what the options are. Plus three attack, plus one one. I mean, both of those just deal with the, uh, with the Hydrologist. He has to trade, right? He knows it, it, it was coined out, so he knows how big a punish uh, Rockpool Hunter is. Like, even if he takes three attack and hits face, then the the two two getting buffed to a, a three three potentially, then there's no punish. But it still it still seems like an ambitious line to go down. Hmm. I like being ambitious. I do too. So does uh, yeah. Team Vietnam. I like it. This is great identification. The fact that the three attack was available. If he took plus one plus one then the buff would be a punish to this play, but taking plus three attack means that even the buff making this a 3-3, it cannot pick up a value trade, and it's just going to have to trade off one of these minions anyway. Why trade when your opponent is going to do it for you? Yeah, it's actually kind of crazy, isn't it? Like, that play actually Let just gained you so play. much extra damage, yep. and also so much board control, because Icky does have a follow-up with Rat Pack uh, next turn as well, mm -hmm. and then to potentially, even though there's no foreplay, uh, you can actually Rat Pack into Ravasaur Runt, depending, <laughs> depending on the minion. It's happened again. <laughs> Raven, when did you turn into such a child? Is, look, no one can see the way you're looking at me. That's the problem. Turn four. Play. Yes. There you go. Rat Pack um, hitting the board, although Animal Companion pickup might be good enough to change that. If he can get a Misha here, he can just kind of push another four pretty much uncontested, and that's a ton of aggression being pushed through. So Vietnam definitely getting the better of the early game here, but you would expect them to. As we've mentioned before, this Paladin deck does have a nice sprinkling of these early game Murlocs that can grip the board, but not enough to do it consistently game in, game out. And that's how Hunter decks are built, to do it consistently game in, game out. Yeah, I was going to say, especially against Hunter, right? You know, it's uh, it's going to be a problem. And you just see the power of Ravisaur, uh, sorry, Razormor, not Ravisaur. Um, you know, Razormor getting that adapt is absolutely huge. You know, yes. having that available on two, you have a minion to play on one, is exactly how the Hunter would like to open up every single game if possible. If they could have one thing, they would want one drop into Razormor. I do like the point you made about, you know, if, if, you, if you play around it super aggressively in the early game and deny them doing it, then 
they're just going to hit it later on a rat pack, like, you know, plus attack on a rat pack, wind fury, a high main, you know, all yeah, these kind of... like, okay. <laughs> at some point, you're going to get Razor Mord. It kind of reminds me a lot of Hellmaster in that regard, where, yes, absolutely, when you're playing against Hunter, you should do everything you can to stop them Hellmastering on curve on turn four, because yes. that's huge. Yeah. But I've seen players just continue to super aggressively play around Hellmaster, turn five, turn six, so on and so forth. At some point, mate, you're getting Hound Mastered. You just can't stop it happening and for the whole game. Very similar as well to the Raze Mode, that, like, stuff in Hunter is cheap enough that once you get to turn five or six, they can do two things right. in a turn. <laughs> you know, so yeah. they'll probably just get it off anyway. So, see what happens now. The uh, McCall returning McCall. to the... Exactly. Returning to the original attack uh, with the Aldo Peacekeeper. So, it's going to go for the Animal Comp as opposed to the Runt. Runt doesn't do too much, whereas if this is Leoc, I mean, Huff is good as well. Okay. S said everyone ever. <laughs> yeah. Do you so you hover into the three three? What do you trade? A rat or a bird into the two one? <laughs> oh, Raven bad. asking the hard hitting questions that matter. Well, th this is actually correct because now you keep one of each on the board. Ah. Of having two rats. Excellent. Uh, so this is actually the correct play. So good job to Icky. He, uh, he knows how to hunter. And most importantly, as we said, there are two minions on the board. One of these needs to die, or Nesting Rock is going to look very good next turn. And that is not going to happen. I mean, Nesting Rock is not a card that I'm also, like, not super concerned about playing around in situations like this, because it only gains Taunt. Like, it's a 4-7 either sure. way. The stats are still there regardless, and there's a good chance that when it comes down on turn 5, it's the biggest minion in play anyways. It's kind of the one you want to deal with. There are annoying situations like this where it prevents you from dealing with the small minions. Like the Vilefin Inquisitor just picking up these nice trades would be great. But I mean, really, is he going to True Silver a 1-1 one -one that turn to play around Nesting Rock? No Maybe. way. No <laughs> way. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, Consecrate kind of helps out, but I imagine this is going to be a True Silver turn. And Redemption doesn't really line anything up too good. Maybe we see the uh, Getaway Kodo play with the Hydrologist. That's how confident I was am of getting Getaway Kodo for, for <laughs> I was, an off I was, just, I was looking at the hand, I was like, he took Redemption. Why are we talking about... I was like, yeah, ah, I see. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I mean, a second Stonehill is always nice, but the problem is, is it just too slow? When there's it's a rock slow. on the board, there's yeah. two one ones. We can see that there's high main, but just the fact Hunt has four cards means something's going on next turn that's going to be strong, right? Your confidence was misplaced, sir. Uh, it would have been... If I did, it would have been fine. Oh, I see. Yeah. The ultimate out. Um, yeah, I agree this play is very slow, but what's the fast play in your hand right now? You don't really have one, right? Like, True Silver is a very fast card, but it doesn't do anything on this board. You can't chew through the nesting rock. Actually, because Equality Conk is available next turn, yeah. this becomes way better, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can just Equality Conk next turn if he needs to, of course. If not, can just equip True Silver. But, well, I'm uh, sticking with what was the alternative. Like, really, like what was the other play he had this turn? True Silver the rock. <laughs> Get him. <laughs> I guess. I mean, you got to get through it at some point. It's true. But as I said, with the quality and Consecrate, it becomes much easier to do. Tracking picked up for Icky. I've been seeing a few players play Tracking. I have, I'm just not convinced by that card, personally. Hmm. Uh, but I guess with you leaning towards more one-drops, then tracking in out those out, potentially, and getting a high drop is very yeah. important. Very similar to the way you uh, play like Tolve Ward and exactly. clean out the yeah. one. That, was, that was the point I wanted to make, because like, my experience with building Hunter is that you want to play a lot of one-drops to be able to consistently get on the board first against the aggressive decks. Then you also want to play a lot of beefy minions so that you can outlast uh, Quest Warrior, for example. Um, so that building your deck, ticking both of those boxes, leaves you with kind of quite often this weird gap in your mid-game turns where you don't consistently have enough cards. You just have one drops or high mains mm -hmm. kind of things in your hand. So you need something to bridge that gap. And the two cards that can do that effectively are Tolville Warden to increase the density of your deck and then allow you to hit things like high main more consistently. Or you just play tracking. And then whenever you hit one of those awkward turns, you just fill it with yeah, a tracking yeah. into a play that you can make. We are going to see the equality come down now. This is going to be a clean as with the uh, minions on body means it's going to be able to clear everything even the second half of high made mm -hmm. but this whole turn was used to clear the board and now Icky can continue to jump onto it can actually play out the animal comp fire bat and the runt and then have tracking next turn if he really wants the only problem is can track in this turn to fill out the curve hmm you do it, right? The, yeah, why not, right? The, yeah. the, the Bat Companion run play only takes six anyway, so you might as well just take up the one. And I think playing three beasts this turn and having just seen your opponent commit their board clear 
That's a pretty easy hound master pick. Yeah. I like it, Leoc. Not too bad. Doesn't look amazing like on its own, but with hound master available, it's quite the uh, formidable beast. Uh, two 1-1s, I guess. Two one ones is something. Stealth is actually reasonable. Is there any world where that stealth allows you to hit a Houndmaster that you otherwise wouldn't? Probably not, right? Yeah. Realistically, I, against Paladin turn seven. I like the two one ones because yeah. Leok buffs the one ones regardless of them being beasts. Yes. They're, regardless of them not being beasts, should I say? Sure. So you can potentially get value if Leok continues to live. Pyro picked up though two one mana secrets in hand that can start to do some some clearing work on this board state, but uh, he's one short of being able to break through that uh, Ravasaur run and kill the plants. And mm. since this isn't priest, he doesn't have a nice way to give his Pyro the extra health he'd need to do that anyway. Yeah, I wonder if you actually just hit the Ravasaur run this turn, then Pyro uh, Noble Sack to clear off everything but the Leon. It's possible. I think like the line here from Roll is that he's look, he's true silvering the Leoc to reduce the most damage here, and then next turn he's just looking to true silver the run and then do it that way. Because sure. uh, he can even like if he he's setting up for Pyro Spike Ridge Deed is I think what he's doing. So next turn, even if there's a big minion played that he can't clear, he can hit the two two with the true silver Pyro Spike Ridge Deed to clear the board, and then there'd be just that one minion being contested. Yeah, there's even a chance he's just setting up for Drake. Also just possible, hits him yeah. to the run, plays Drake next turn, has mm -hmm. a 4-8 on board. Well, he's got a lot of options, though, and I think that's the important part here. The health differences are significant, though. Icky on 28. Not really been touched too much, but... Roll is edging towards the point of being in, in the, the, the scary parts of health when you're against Hunter. Yes. And we've seen no heal so far. I imagine there's at least Ragnaros Light Lord in the deck and hopefully one Forbidden Heal. I think one is needed. Oh, unless, yeah, you, know, you play, you might play the, the horse. Ivory Knight. Yeah. Uh, you might play Ivory Knight actually instead of a Forbidden Healing. But I don't know, like this is a definitely looking rough. Now with Bo as well. This might just be too much to handle here. It might be. There's a tree silver for a little bit of healing, and there are big taunts available, both the Drake and the Spike Ridge Steed, the two options that are uh, a, a sort of quasi board clear as well as a huge taunt this turn. Sunkeeper Taran pickup now is very relevant as well, and I just looking at the the Drake versus Pyro thing, I just I kind of like the Pyro because you then have this huge health Pyro that you can use um, over time with the secrets. The difference now is that that the line of play of you know true silver over two turns plus AOE kind of got shut down by this Hound Master yeah. anyway. But in the world where that plan worked out, I think I just liked the Pyro because of that opportunity to just continue board nuking the turn after and the turn after with uh, with the, the one mana secrets and the huge health pool on your Pyro. Yeah. So looking at whether maybe even hero power into Tarim would be any good. Uh, just so you can kill off the uh, the bat. You have two three threes against your three seven and three three. But I don't think it does too much versus the Pyro potential. So if he Drake adds power to the ball, uh, it leaves the power on the board the same, same as the Pyro Steed play. He is going to go for Pyro Steed, so I think his uh, thinking is similar to mine. There's also the addition that like Primordial Drake is just a, a much more uh, universally strong card. You can just slam it in a lot of situations. Well, where... at worst, it's a 4-8 target. Exactly. Like, at worst. Right. <laughs> Whereas Spike Ridge Steed actually requires a target for you to land it on. So I think, you know, A, this is a lot more taunt in play for a similar amount of mana, and you can follow this up later now with Primordial Drake, which is just a universally stronger card. It's going to actually use the kill command here on the wild pyro. I guess this is reasonably safe. I wondered whether he just kill command here or not. <laughs> just get him in a couple of turns. He probably doesn't die. That's going to be wary of heal, though. That's the, that's the problem. Yeah, there's there's Rag Light Lord and there's Rag Light Lord plus another healing card at least usually in this deck. Whether that healing card is Forbidden Healing or Ivory Knight, as you talked about, is somewhat up for debate, but. Rag Light Lord is almost ever present. There is uh, Stonehill Defender cards that can get picked up as well that turn into Rag Light Lord. There's, there are a lot of ways for the Paladin to heal. Icky, perhaps rightly scared of the healing being there, but my question is, does this play win the game too often? 
So you have a you have a two two on the board, right? So this play by not kill command hero powering face, your play is playing around your opponent having healing. Yeah. Significant amounts of healing but as well. But you're also not putting yourself in range of any draws, right? Right. But if your opponent has that healing and you have a two two on the board and you've killed his taunt, aren't you losing to that same healing anyway? Sure. That's true. I, I don't really see the upside of the play that was made by Vietnam that turn. Also as well, disclaimer, Stonehill cannot get you Ragnaros. Hmm? Oh, I'm, what am I thinking of? <laughs> oh, I'm thinking of um, Discover, I'm Servant of Calamos. Oh, okay. I, I've, I've, I've made that exact mistake. <laughs> Just <but> before. <laughs> I've made that exact mistake, but in reverse last week as well. I, some oh, really? part of my brain just keeps mixing those two up. I don't know what it is. Just that can imagine. Thank you. Uh, I love that you're always here for me, Raven. Uh, unfortunately so, yes. Yeah. Always am, regardless of however mean you may be sometimes. Mm. But multiple one-drops. This is what we were saying earlier. In, in like, Imagine if Tolve was played beforehand. Obviously, the game would look different, but you're much less likely to draw into these and draw into the bigger guys in the deck. This is pretty much how you lose with Hunter a lot of the time. I wonder if the risk was just worth it of the kill command. If, what? if the pyro was just a taunt, cool, I'm, I'm, I'm down. Mm -hmm. But the, because it was the Spike Ridge D to summon the 2-6 as right. well, it's like, that is a lot of damage to try and plow through. It really no is. No cards in hand. And because it's, you know, the part that bothers me is that he didn't develop board presence behind it. He just had a 2-2. Two -two. It's not like the hyena was growing into a game-winning threat. It was just a 2-2. Two -two, if so... if the plants were actually beasts, right? Right, like, sure. Suddenly you're like, okay. Right. <laughs> okay. But, like, you know, like, kill command hero power face, you win the game over two turns if there's no healing. You put them down to three, right, from the position that they were in. And you still have draws, your second kill command, for example, right. as well. Right, exactly. Get you a sneaky mm. out. So in that position, you're losing to um, large amounts of healing, like Rag Light Lord or, like, Forbidden Healing. But if you're just developing a 2-2 on the board and allowing them to play into it, I just feel like you lose to that same healing anyway, so your play just hasn't really improved on the situation. Yeah, especially when the healing is either a full forbidden healing, which is 20 health, or it's Ragnaros, which is 8 healing plus an 8-8. Eight, eight. Yep. So... And it's pretty much, I mean, it's happened in exact clarity. We've seen the absolute minimum amount of healing that would could be classified as healing, just the second true silver from Turkey's deck. Two off. Yeah, and he's, he just hasn't got there. He went with the line where he played around healing by just not committing to face, and he just still hasn't got there because he didn't commit enough uh, board pressure behind it. It's one of the issues with now the current, the lack of quick shot in Hunter. Yes. Means, I, I think, it, what's funny is you, you, there's one argument where you could be like, oh, because there's no quick shot, there's no point trying to be aggressive. Mm -hmm. But I actually think because there's no quick shot, you have to take the opportunities where you can get them and go hard. Yeah, Because sure. you don't have three draws instead of one, you know, to, to buff the extra damage. I think you actually have to go all in a lot of the time and rely on that hero power. But that was a very, very close game. But uh, Turkey is going to take it. And uh, it's a good start for them going 1-0 up. Harling versus Hunter, as you said, was very, very close. But uh, unfortunately, Hunter didn't win. Ah. <laughs> uh. Such can't, a, can't such win a them all. Feeling. Can't, can't win them all. No, I, that Paladin deck continues to impress me though. The, it's the, crazy, isn't it? The more the more I see it perform, I played it a little bit myself. Um, not not too much. I was messing around more with Paladin when I was testing Paladin in the early days, the first couple of days when uh, you know Kalento was messing around with the hand buff stuff, yep. and people were still trying Elementals, which is why I've got Elementals on my brain apparently. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I haven't, I've, I've played maybe 20, 25 games with it, not a great amount, but it, it's, it has impressed me in that small sample well, size. Well, what's funny is you can see how powerful it is just from the games we've cast today, mm -hmm. and it's not yet done the Murloc thing to someone, not right. properly. You know, yeah, the, yeah. we've not seen the bigger that board, but we're going to move on to game two of Turkey versus Vietnam, and it's uh, Stop It Blizz versus Leoz. I, I'm going to... ZGG feels like a, a prefix for his name, so... Leos is going to be and Leos. All right, yeah, I can get down with that. Warrior versus Rogue, so not a Warrior Mirror. And now ah. this one's going to be the Pirate one, isn't it? <laughs> Rogue versus Pirate Warrior. Let's go. Yeah, we can see Turkey there. Wow, they drive really fast. Um, <laughs> <laughs> excellent, <laughs> excellent observation. <laughs> no speed limits in Turkey. Yeah, apparently not. Oh wow. wow, that's that yeah. is beautiful. Okay, that's all of Turkey. Um, All right, put, put Turkey on the list as well. I want to go there as well. I did actually get invited to uh, to Istanbul for a yo-yo event at <laughs> one point, but I just as couldn't fast make it. In Vietnam. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Hearthstone Global Games has now turned into Ravens Traffic Report, <laughs> apparently. So. Yeah, and weather reports as well. There looks to be some kind of storm going on in the uh, 
what looked to be jungles of Vietnam. Vietnamese jungle, yeah. It does look awesome, though. We can see the players getting ready again. No surprise that Leoz is in the same location. It's, it's kind of cool to see Vietnam. This seems to be a, a central esports location. Mm -hmm. And for me as well, like my sort of background was in running local events. So it's kind That's of. That's true, it's, yeah. It's really nice, actually, to just see like someone is, is running some kind of area to run firesides, to run tournaments, just hangout areas in general for, for gaming nerds to get together. <laughs> because back in my day, these did not exist as much, at least. You're, you're still a youngling to me, Raven. I don't know where this back like in my day stuff years or something, right? <laughs> doesn't count. All right. But Rogue versus Warrior coming up. And this is going to be very, very polarized based on the archetypes that are coming out. If it's Quest Rogue and Quest Warrior, massive favorite to the Quest Rogue. If it's Pirate Warrior and pretty much any Rogue. <laughs> and Rogue. <laughs> yeah. Massive favorite to the Pirate Warrior. There are things that Quest Rogue can do to improve their win rate against Pirate Warrior. Um, Glacial Shards are pretty much standard these days. They help. But then Balfin, Tidehunters, Shield Bearers, those kind of cards being played as well that can eventually be 5-5 five, five taunts are a big deal. And as you can see now, you know, Stop It Blaze has eight top 100 legend finishes. That is a, for those of you who don't know too much, that is a large, large amount. Uh, and it shows that there are, you know, play, uh, great players in, in places we're not used to seeing uh, represent Hearthstone. So that's kind of awesome. And he wants uh, Blizzard to stop being so darn cool. I'm sure that's exactly, <laughs> exactly what the name means. GG Leos actually uh, worked for uh, Ghost of Gamers. Yes. So uh, I, I actually wasn't fully aware of that. So uh, you learn something new every day. Yeah, no surprise that the uh, newly minted Blizzard employee, TJ Sanders, has been in control of these uh, facts. So... His words, not ours. But Blizzard, we love you too. But of course, stop. What's, of course, stop. Don't it. stop being awesome. Don't stop being awesome. That's it. Raven sees the lines. Um, no surprise to me though that Stop It Blizz has uh, eight top 100 finishes because if you have a name like that, you will try everything you can to Get make it. sure that Blizzard themselves have to publish it on their website when they post their top 100 finishes. But the main reason why he keeps getting there is that he's a very, very accomplished player. So. Yeah, and uh, again, you know, for, for those players who you know maybe don't hit that kind of legend rank every month, uh, that actually finishing top 100 is very, very yeah. difficult. Yes. Like, you can hit it, in, you know, early in the month or yeah, whatever, yeah, great. Yeah, right. You can, you know, uh, float around, like, you know, a couple of hundred and stuff. Finishing on top 100 is incredibly difficult, and huge respect to someone who's done that eight times. Yeah, if you if you play a few hours a day every day, you're gonna get yourself into top 100 at some point. If you're if you're a good player, yeah. you know, if you're a high legend quality player, you just play a few hours a day. At some point, you're gonna sneak into top 100, possibly even higher. Towards the end of the month, it's a massive, just absolute snake pit, shark infested <laughs> waters. Everyone cutthroating each other, queue sniping, counter queuing, everything you can possibly imagine people trying to get there on the last day so if you get that done then you are a very very accomplished hearthstone player just to do it once let alone eight times great description all i imagine is sharks wielding bags of snakes to throw at people that's how brutal it is in top 100 legend but this is going to be brutal as well because leos is playing pirate warrior against the rogue from stop it blaze and it looks like it's actually a miracle rogue from him so yeah he gains my respect uh, as opposed to uh, if he was playing quest rogue and then if we can be friends, mate. Plus uh, one Raven point. Yeah, you're now on one. Yes. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the Pirate Warrior, you know, not off to the fastest start in the world uh, with an opening of upgrade, but a lot of the times it just doesn't matter against Rogue. They just have uh, damage permanence effectively too. Any damage they do to the Rogue is, is uh, never going to get healed uh, unless, I guess, hallucination into shield block. Mm -hmm. uh, but other than that, yeah, hallucinations, swashburglers. There's, you know, there's a decent chunk of defensive cards that you can get. But realistically, yeah. the damage you do is normally the damage the rogue is going to continue to take. Mm -hmm. And uh, pirate warrior is a highly aggressive deck, although we've not seen anything too crazy out yet from Leoz. The, uh, I believe the number one win rate card is in his hand and just been hit the board. South Sea Captain. South Sea Captain indeed. But speaking of high win rate cards, Edwin Van Cleef, and I was just about to say a hallucination draw this turn is absolutely nuts. That is hallucination backstab coin Edwin Van Cleef this turn. You can even get yourself an inner rage off this hallucination for a board clear and another plus two plus two. That's the wrong rage. That is the wrong rage. We want the player called rage. Um, uh, he's always the, the right rage. He's always the right kind of rage. Uh, none of these options are fantastic. Gorhal might just be a finisher. 
And sure. A lot. Of, I mean, maybe you can take Battle Rage because you're expecting Van Cleef to not die, mm -hmm. right? He's going to take damage, but not die, more than likely. So Battle Rage is probably the more consistent play. Gorhal sometimes can be just good at seven damage to face later on, but the Brotherhood shall come. It's going to be Battle Rage. Yeah, I'm my, not planning to get to turn. Myself and, and Leos do not share a language, but I think what he just said was coin Van Cleef, that's unfortunate, as he was talking to his team. you do share a language, because he speaks three or four different languages. Ah, so there's, a, there's a very good chance, though. I think it's uh, Vietnamese, uh, Korean, English. I think there was one more. Interesting. So, yeah. Right. Okay, so, uh, say I'll read it, and South Sea Deck Hand is an option. I wonder... It, it's kind of unfortunate because Dread, Dread Corsair is a nice speed bump, but that's his whole turn, mm -hmm. and I don't think that's fast enough. Can I set up for, oh, he's going for the clear himself. Okay, he's just going to yeah. clear it off. This is reasonable. You just take eight damage, call it a day, because if even if you put uh, Raider down, uh, Corsair, sorry, then that could just get clanked up, and then you've got to do it again, you know, and again. So this clear is actually really nice for Leos. Uh, still took eight to the face, but Pirate Warrior not too often worried about its own health total. Yeah, I, I've I've seen this happen and had this happen to me on a, a scary number of occasions now, where I make a, an AA, even a 10-10 Van Cleef early as Rogue. The pirate warriors or the good pirate warriors will generally just trade into it and then start again, um, because um, if you try and race it, there's that 10 damage on board that's pushing you, but you also make more cards in your opponent's deck good against you, right? Because if they have a 10-10 stuck on the board and you try to race it, if their hand is backstabs and eviscerates and fan of knives, yeah, they could just use they use those to clear your minions and they're pushing damage. Whereas if they have nothing on board and they spend their whole turn clearing your minions, great, you just play more minions next turn. You equip, equip Arcanite Reaper, you push damage. Um, so I think like this is a situation I've actually seen Pirate Warrior win from a lot more than you might expect. Obviously, it's a fantastic play for the Rogue, and it increases their win rate exponentially to have that big Van Cleef opening. But I don't think it's checkmate as long as you generally do trade into it as the Pirate Warrior. Yeah, and we're going to see a bit of a you know a big play here from a Turkey. It's going to be the coin Gadgetzan into Backstab trade. Backstab just going to try and draw into something great. Second mm. Gadgetzan, not great at all. But the onus is now on Leos from Vietnam to deal with this gadget Zan because even as a deck as aggressive as this warrior, I believe you do not want to give your opponent a way out when they only have two cards in hand. Right. The Abyss pickup would have been uh, pretty nice. Stub it, Blizz would have had Battle Rage live to at least draw the one card off the injured Valera itself. So it would have drawn two with the Auctioneer on the Plus board. Abyss. Eviscerate would have removed perhaps the, you know, the Captain or the, the Blood Cell Raider, whatever, got committed to board. So he would have been off to the races if he hadn't have traded. And yes, Leoz is trading much, much more than he would maybe like to at this point. But, you know, Pirate Warrior can do this. If he's able to stick a board at some point, that translates immediately into a lot of that damage you've already lost and you're buying yourself so much time by making the trades yeah i think it's important that he's trading and he has three minions still in hand if he had none then yeah we're, okay we're in we're in a bit of deep deep water going on right here. but he doesn't he has a lot of minions in hand all pirates and now he can actually play uh, can he he can go raider cultist yes. Corsair, which is a very nice turn it is he doesn't kill the gadgets though. no there is uh, no way for him to do that with Patches having already been summoned this turn. Patches would have been his one out and way to do it. He does miss uh, one attack on the uh, Blood Sail Raider, but much more importantly is able to generate all three minions on the same turn. So one attack down on the Raider to develop a whole new 3-3 on the board seems worth it to me. But now it's party time for Miracle Rogue, for Turkey, and for Stop It Blizz. Yeah, going to be Battle Rage for three cards. Uh, this turn, which is absolutely incredible. Foresight to get the Battle Rage off there. There is Prep, Mimic Pod, Shiv. Sherizim probably not going to be played this turn uh, due to be able to just use more spells, but, you know, Eviscerate as well. A second Prep. This is getting mildly ridiculous. Curious about the sequencing there. I was wondering whether it was worth um, using more natural mana on the cheaper spells that you're almost certainly going to use this turn, like you know, eviscerating the three four, for example. Yeah, it's going to happen, right? Right. Because um, I don't think Mimic Pod necessarily always gets cast that turn, so you might end up pushing through your deck to Fan of Knives, for example, and prepping that for three mana instead. These are very small things that come in uh, Miracle Turn sequencing that are not always relevant, and I'm not even convinced that I'm right in that situation, but they're worth thinking about. Yeah, he can clear this up very easy. Now Arcane Giant now being 
Uh, it's going to be free. Absolutely huge. This huge, huge miracle <laughs> to back an Arcane Giant. And I believe GG Leoz is just going to GG out of this game because that is not something you can race as Pirate Warrior. No. It's also wow. not something that you can successfully trade into as Pirate Warrior. <laughs> ah, first mate, got him. Excellent. Fine. I will hit one for three this turn and then for one the next turn and we're halfway there. Wow, what a game. We, we were kind of joking around that if it's Pirate Warrior versus Rogue full stop, then the game's going to be a stomp and it kind of was but not in the way we thought. And the sheer power of those draws was incredible. And the second gadget exam being picked up after the first one was dealt with so cleanly, just opened up the game there. And suddenly Turkey 2-0 ahead versus Vietnam. There's always that asterisk. When you, you talk about Rogue versus Pirate Warrior, of course it is you know, massively favored for one of the most aggressive decks in history. But there's always that asterisk, which is unless Edwin Van Cleef. Edwin unless Van Cleef rogue things. Yeah, Edwin Van Cleef is the wild card, and it's similar to the days where, you know, Combo Druid was one of the dominant decks. If Force of Nature Savage Raw Combo Druid was one of the dominant decks in the meta, and you used to say, oh yeah, this deck is heavily favored against, uh, against Combo Druid. Well, if they wild growth on two and they have combo on nine, you probably still lose. <laughs> yeah, you probably like, still going, are, uh, going out. There are just certain things that are so powerful, you can't stop them. And for the rogue there, he, you saw several of them happening in the same game. Yeah, that was absolutely insane. But we are going to be moving on now to game three of this series, Berserky versus Chani. Uh, Berserky on the warrior. Uh, so again, could be pirate, could be uh, quest versus Chani on the shaman. And I feel like... Um, you know, if it is Quest Rory, you know, correct me if you've had different experience, but I feel like Shaman's one that can go pretty well versus Quest Rory. A mixture of the hero power creating additional token just to make the their uh, die insect hero power quite, you know, not as good later on. Also, they have hexes to just sweep through the high health taunts. Uh, they have enough AoE to help with the smaller taunts. And they can actually build up an awkward board and sometimes Brawl just isn't good enough. So I was talking to Sho about this. Um, Sho actually spoke to me and said, you know, I was watching the first week of HGG and um, you said that you felt that uh, Elemental Shaman was favored against Taunt Warrior. Uh, that was something that I got from uh, Ball Control, who would climbed to Legend this month with the Elemental Shaman list, has done very, very well from it, pushed on to High Legend since then. And primarily, he's fi finished his climb by farming Taunt Warriors. But Sho says that Elemental Shaman is massively overrated and that Quest Warrior is favored in that matchup. So I will note that Ball Swings Control... Swings and roundabouts. Ball Control put Black Knight in his deck yes, as well, which is definitely nice. We'll see more about these players, though. Chani also playing for the Vietnamese-based team, uh, Smoking Falcon. Oh, I just want to say Smoking Ravens. I'm going to petition them to change the name. Uh, Smoking Falcons, a uh, regular participant of a popular weekly tournament, Gosu Cup, which we know. We know about that one. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and yeah, it looks like she's doing pretty well. She likes Hunter, so sold. <laughs> And again, Next. more <laughs> more kebab love coming out from Berserky. Grilled lamb and hot tomato Ooh. sauce sounds delicious to me. 28 points in 2016. Not quite as many as some of the people we have seen, but again, nothing to be ashamed of. Okay, this is going to be a tough one for who's going to be my favorite here. One player likes Hunter. One player was a uh, StarCraft 2 player. So I'm just split straight down the middle here. I think it's going to be a win either way. Wow, actual unbiased casting from Raven first for the time. first time in history. But yes, Warrior versus Shaman, hotly contested matchup. Of course, there's still the opportunity that this is Pirate Warrior again, and that throws the spanner in the works of everything we're talking about. Or the Shaman is an elemental. Or the Shaman is an elemental. That's a good point as well. There's actually a list I really, really like, and my mind has gone blank on the guy that I need to give credit to, so I apologize immensely. You later. Um, but it's a, it's a very, very burst-heavy Shaman that's not aggro Shaman in the sense of you know, build minions, finish with uh, with Hammer of Twilight, Lava Burst, Jade Lightning, as we've seen. It's literally just, you know, clear board, clear board, stall, and then Doom Hammer you. And just, you know, oh, just get them. Yeah, just Doom Hammer, Rock Bite, a Rock Bite, a Lava Burst, Lava Burst. And it's actually really effective. It's just playing like double Volcano to be able to clear boards over and over again. I've had a oh, ton nice. of fun playing that and actually a lot of success as well. I was pushing top 100 legend playing it at one point. So it actually seems pretty strong to me. Also as well, uh, kind of a... Uh, you know, control, it's actually in the Zoth Shaman, is very strong in Wild at the moment. Woo! <laughs> you know, the Wild alarm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so... so <laughs> those of you that aren't aware, Raven spent one month playing Wild and now thinks he knows everything about that format. I do. Yes. Uh, but now moving one on to... One person on this casting desk has top 10 Wild Legend finishes, and spoilers, it's not Raven.
until the end of this month. <laughs> so uh, moving on, though, back into this format and this game, Turkey, with the Pirate Warrior. So uh, ignore all the control speak. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Uh, and Chani does have the Elemental Shaman by looks of it with Blaze Collar Hot Spring Guardian available. And even Kazai uh, Blood, Blood Mage Thanos is uh, always an interesting pick. Ooh, bit of Tide Hydra in the Pirate Warrior as well. And I'll go back to uh, to Ball Control. If you guys at home don't know who Ball Control is, he's uh, probably the most dominant player in the UK over the last 12 to 18 months. He's a player that we all petitioned to be part of our team, but he didn't quite get the popular vote in terms of some of the more well-known players. Um, but he played this deck um, a ton in the early days of the expansion. He recommended heavily that his teammate Jambre brought it to the tournament to represent the UK against USA. Jambre then got absolutely stomped by Firebat's Pirate Warrior and uh, Ball Control tweeted something to the effect of, oh, you know, I, I was like 80% against Pirate Warrior with this deck. I guess it just wasn't our day. So he feels this deck is very, very effective against both uh, types of warrior, although many people show, and perhaps even Firebat, if he always draws like that, probably disagree with that assessment. And it's Firebat, so he probably does. But uh, yeah, better tight Hydra's in the Pirate Warrior. And what 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 are the reasons for this card versus you know w whatever it's even cut for? Is there no Leroy, for example? It costs five mana, and it has two number eights on it. That, those are the reasons for this card. Do you think it's a good pick? I, I honestly, there are a lot of lists that don't play. I mean, straight up cards on the table. I have not played Pirate Warrior since the expansion came out. So One I, of the good guys? Yeah, I'm, I'm, there are more interesting things for me to test and have opinions on these days than the optimal build of Pirate Warrior. So I haven't tested it out too much. I do like it in Agro Druid, and I do like mm -hmm. it in Midrange Hunter. Mm -hmm. I like it in both of those decks. I just haven't got around to playing it yet in uh, Pirate Warrior. Okay, so uh, we've got the two Hot Spring Guardians available and a Maelstrom Pole. Uh, Igneous Elemental, I still don't know what I think about this card in general. Feels very slow, it's even for Elemental Shaman. Yeah, uh, feels very, very. I mean, it's, it's good in Quest Road, guys. But um, but we are talking about Shaman for now, so it's going to go for the uh, the Elemental this turn. Interesting. Hot Spring does get cleaned up very easily, but you do still gain pretty much the heal from it as well. So definitely a tough one. Uh, it's, a, it's a brutal clear for the second uh, Blood Cell Cultist, though. The, obviously not expecting the Blood Cell Cultist number two is, is Vietnam at this point, having just seen the first one already. But this is already just a ridiculous board state. And, you know, most commonly, Elemental Shamans are fairly weak on terms of Lightning Storms. They just play Maelstrom Portal, and then they have Kalamos as their Lightning Storm. Yeah. They don't often play more than one natural copy of Lightning Storm in the deck. Yeah, we did see a couple of players bringing Volcano, though. That's Especially true. Being one that of is them. true, and yeah. Volcano is a card I actually love. The more I play that card, the more I like it. Uh, so there, there is a chance. But as we said as well, you know, these are countries from around the world playing. And uh, although, you know, the internet is a wonderful thing and you can pretty much watch anyone play at, at this point and, and check out tons of decks, some regions do prefer their own styles and prefer their own, you know, versions of the deck list. Mm -hmm. So there's a chance that we might not see it from the Vietnamese team. If you if you like Volcano that much, you should play that Burst Doom. Okay, you, you have to it's, give me that it's list. really yeah. strong. By the way, someone tweet at me and let me know that guy's name that I've forgotten, and I will retweet and give credit where due. I hate doing that. The guy's built an awesome deck, and I've just forgotten his name. I'm, I'm just already picturing the responses. Tweet at me and let me know the guy's name I forgot. Yes. Raven. <laughs> <laughs> I can just see. I'll, I'll preemptively make the joke before anyone else does. But yeah, you, um, you haven't lived until you've played Acolyte of Pain into Volcano, cleared your <laughs> opponent's board, and drawn, drawn three cards. cards. It's oh. Beautiful. Oh but yes, Volcano is going to be very much needed here for Vietnam because this is one of the most impressive Pirate Warrior starts that you can get. Not only are they pushing damage, they have a massive amount of board control from the 3-3 weapon. They also just have a very sticky high health board state, which is a nightmare for this deck to deal with, especially since most commonly it's been cutting Lightning Storms from the deck. Yeah, and it, you know... The... <laughs> Just even, there's multiple options on turn four here. There's even Blood Cell Raider armor up if really needed, but Frothing Berserker, Deck Hand, Smoke Run Elite, you know, there's all the options here, which is when, when Pirate Warrior's got multiple options for one turn, you're normally very afraid of that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this is all going well. And uh, it looks like Berserker has the, the better, better Tide Hydra ready for five as well. So we're gonna continue with more options going forward. I do think, I just like the Kalkron to the, uh, to the hot spring. 
You conquer on face, right? You just you trade the weapon in a one one. Oh and sure, sure, sure. Face, yeah. You know what? I actually just forgot the weapon was three. I thought it was yeah, two. the the weapon yeah. got real, real yeah. big, real, real fast. <laughs> yeah, true. Yep, you're completely right. This is just way better. You get rid of your one uh, one health minions, or at least one of them, and uh, make you much less susceptible to the a well the lack of AOE mm -hmm. we were talking about. And this is just grim for Team Vietnam here. We could be on the verge of a three zero sweep. Uh, for Turkey here today. Yep. Hot Spring and Flame Tongue is about as good as it gets this turn, though. Allows this uh, this um, Flame Elemental to do something relevant, which Turkey didn't have to let it do. They could have chosen to trade into it there to play around this exact scenario. But I think Berserky and Turkey in general are just. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I had I had to make that right at some point. It just it just felt too nice to okay. say it. I apologize. Um, but yeah, I think he just feels so comfortable that he, he's just happy pushing damage. Even the worst case scenario, which this basically was outside of Lightning Storm, this is about the worst thing that could have happened to him this turn, and it's still just fine. Yep. Yeah, it's uh, looking pretty grim. Is there even a way? It looks like this uh, game's gonna be over really soon. So uh, this might be a little bit too much for Vietnam to handle here. Not looking too rosy. Maelstrom Portal is doing nothing, even with the spell damage. It's just going to send that uh, Frothing Berserker spiraling out of control. Fire Ellie not enough to get there either. One turn off Blaze Cooler, despite playing the Elemental next turn. Fire Ellie takes the five power off the board, but adds one to the Frothing. So there would still be six, nine, 12, 15 damage in play, comfortably enough to push through lethal. Vietnam are looking in trouble. Maybe two taunts from the Totem and the Maelstrom Portal? Is that ever good enough? No, because the frothing just grows from the taunts <laughs> yeah. being traded into no, anyway. the frothing just gets them. I'm not seeing it. And the frothing grows significantly from the Maelstrom Portal as well. <laughs> That's not going to be it. And Vietnam, oh, you can see with a disappointment there on uh, Chandy's face. You can't really argue with that. Getting 0-3 in, uh, in your first match is definitely rough, but Turkey... Great, super solid performance actually. Like they're not messing around. Even the Miracle Rogue turn was, you know, a good identification of, you know, exactly when you need to try and go off and just about hold on. Yeah. And uh, organize that long Miracle turn really well. Pirate Warrior just got him, so you can't really argue with that, I guess. Yeah. And just, just Pirate Warrior just counter Elemental Shame, and it feels feels like it at this point. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. We we have our two-game sample size. As I was talking about, Ball Control had a match much bigger sample size, but was probably also playing on average against a lower quality of player. Just, yeah. you know, on ladder, the average player at rank 5 to legend is probably weaker than the average player in this tournament, so who knows how that affects things, but Pirate Warrior has looked very comfortable in those matchups so far, but they have both. Both the Pirate Warrior <laughs> wins nuts. have been the absolute nuts. Yeah, and, and like we said earlier, Turkey winning 3-0 means two, a player from each team doesn't even get to play. As, and they're Thunder up and Nelio, so that's kind of interesting that both those players, uh, what you'd off, off the top of your head just say the two stronger players on sure. the team, don't even have to play. But they were in the, the scary spot of saying, well, if we really need this win to survive, we're going to pull it out of the bag. So congratulations to Turkey. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of cool. I genuinely didn't know who would win this one. I thought Vietnam would be slightly favored, but uh, but yeah, Turkey looking strong. Yeah, there's a, there's a couple of groups in general where there's a lot of these kind of matchups where I'm just excited just to watch, learn about the players' play styles, their deck preferences, read those facts, see the shots of the countries, you know, all this kind of stuff, and just experience um, the environment and the culture. And this group was very much one of them. This matchup was very much one of them. I was fascinated to see who was going to come out ahead. Absolutely dominant in the end from Turkey. I think the road game, as you said, particularly was was well navigated. Although it, you know the opening big, hand, yeah, yeah. the opening hand to get the job done was dealt to him. But you know the the double tempo auctioneer was a very smart play. And then the pirate warrior game, when you needed a perfect pirate warrior game, Blizzard provided. Yeah. So uh, you know that's going to be match three done for today. And uh, don't go anywhere though, guys, because we've still got. Matches four and five coming up after this. We're almost there. Quiet down, everyone. This is not like any of our previous expeditions. This will be far more ambitious. We're stepping into a land of primordial wonder. Infused with
with astonishing elemental energies. The plant life here holds very unusual properties. So don't touch anything. And while you may be excited to see the local fauna, you might want to make sure they don't see you. Because their powers of adaptation are devastating. Make no mistake, we will be tested at every turn. But if we stay on our guard, we might just survive. Now then, are you ready? Then let's journey into Ongoro Crater.